good evening, everybody, and welcome to another uh, edition of Workbench Wednesday. Uh, happy to have you all here uh, on the program with us uh, tonight. It'll be a, uh, a fun one. Uh, this will be probably our only Workbench Wednesday for uh, for the month of January because we've got a really busy month ahead uh, with a new catalog coming out next Friday. So uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of me on uh, on social media over the next couple of uh, couple of weeks, I'm sure, as well as Dave and the whole crew from Lionel. Uh, lots of us uh, getting getting involved and getting busy here uh, as we get into into catalog time uh, over the next couple of uh, couple of days. It looks like it may have a little bit of a lag on the screen there with the camera. Maybe that not a good idea to blow the horn out. Uh, hopefully, you're all still seeing or hearing me um, here as we get through this. Uh, all I'm seeing is some spinning icons on the screen. So, if you can, uh, let me know what's going on, uh, or on your end, or maybe we'll just restart this sucker. Something like okay. Okay, so here we go. Hopefully, we're uh, we're back into this. I've got the workbench cam up at least, and bring myself, myself back, back in. in. There we go. Uh, now I just gotta mute the phone. Here, hang on a second. All right. Not sure uh, sure what happened there with the. Uh, with the internet, but had a little bit of a glitch. It looks like we're we're back online now, uh, so that's that's good. So I was mentioning um, this will be a busy month for Lionel. We've got our new uh, Volume One catalog coming out next Friday, the fourteenth. Uh, we'll have a catalog launch show that afternoon, uh, and you'll be seeing plenty of things from uh, our our dealers and uh, and other other uh, other groups. Uh, throughout that weekend, I've got a couple of podcasts scheduled with various people, and I think it'll be a good, uh, a good busy time. So uh, I won't be talking a whole lot about the uh, the catalog tonight. Uh, save my breath for the rest of the week, uh, but we'll uh, we'll spend a little bit of time here at the workbench before all the craziness happens, and uh, get one more project in. So tonight's project is going to be a, a pretty simple one. And it's going to be uh, creating ghost signs. And what are ghost signs, you might ask? Ghost signs, uh, if you Google these, you'll find uh, just tons and tons uh, of, of images. And these are signs, that, uh, painting uh, advertising on the sides of buildings was once very, very common. And you still see these today, uh, although they're, they're now mostly in a much more faded and weathered state. Sometimes you'll see signs painted over signs. Uh, some of them have been wonderfully restored, too, which is, which is really nice. Something went wrong. Please try again. Um, the workbench cam is out. Let's try this. Sorry for all the technical difficulties tonight, folks. Looks like we are back on. Okay. Let's put guy back up here. Okay, let's try that one more time. Technology is not being my friend tonight. Uh, but Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, so let, let's go ahead and get started before the, the technology gets me again. Uh, as we are saying, ghost signs are signs that you, that you see on uh, the sides of buildings that have weathered and faded, and we're going to do, do some of these tonight. I'll start off with an example here of one on a model, and the light's going to get in the way of that. Uh, this is a, uh, a HydraCal kit. Uh, but you can see here how the the, uh, the sign on the side there adheres to the 
uh, all the detail in there and gives it a nice painted on look. Uh, so that's a uh, what we'll be doing. I'm going to show you how to do this with uh, with decals like this one. It can also be done uh, very simply with uh, using a paper technique that we'll be talking about here shortly as well. So here you can see another example of that. Um, and this is really easy to do, really uh, a quick way to uh, add a lot of um, uh, of character and color to a to any building or uh, or structure that you may have. Uh, Lee picked up on the Blues Brothers poster there on the side of that one. Uh, great pickup there, Lee. Uh, another little thing that I picked up and put on a few few buildings around the the layout. Uh, so the building we're going to work on tonight is a a plastic kit uh, in HO scale, just because it's what I actually already had on the on the workbench. So I figured, why not? Um, and this is a fairly simple. Uh, Walther's kit. Um, this is designed actually as a, as a structure kit for beginners. Um, and so I wanted to take one of these simple kits and dress it up and see what I could do with it. And I put one uh, ghost sign on the side here already, uh, which, you'll, which you, can, you can pick out. This one was done with a decal. Uh, and I'll, if, uh, if, if you've never done decal work, uh, and we have a lot of requests, I'll, uh, I'll try and uh, I, can, I can show a decal job later, but uh, really a decal on these is just like doing a decal on anything else you've ever done. You soak it in water, slide it off the backing, lay it flat on your surface, uh, use a little bit of a setting solution to get it to settle in, and you're done. Uh, really easy, really easy to do. Um, if you're looking for ghost sign decals or any sort of signage decals, uh, a quick uh, search of your hobby shop or, the, or Google will, will work with really well for you. Uh, this sign and several others that I've used came from a uh, site called Dave's Decals. Uh, and Dave is a uh, retired vet who does a lot of uh, modeling projects and uh, and just has uh, hundreds of these uh, decal sets. And they're actually really, uh, really convenient and really easy to use. Uh, and so I'll throw that, that site up there. Um, you'll see several examples of them here. Uh, but you get a small sheet of decals with eh, half a dozen or so, depending on the size uh, of these signs that you'd like to use. And uh, they go on very easily. Um, and of course, he does other building signs, road signs, graffiti. Uh, some things are a little bit humorous uh, and some specialty projects there as well. So one good site to check out uh, if you're looking for uh, an easy, ready to go um, thing here. And that's, uh, you know, the decal jobs on these uh, things. The other thing that you can do in the way that I'm going to show next, because it's just slightly more involved, but uh, still very easy and manageable and requires no special skills whatsoever. Uh, and that is to go create your own own signs. And you don't have to be a, uh, a master draftsman to, to do this, although you could certainly, if you have better photo skills than I do or, or artistic skills than I do, you could draw these out in uh, any sort of design program on, on, uh, on your computer and print them out. Uh, you can also clip images from online. Uh, the trick that you want to do, uh, if you're finding an image online, is try and get one that is as square to the camera as possible, so you don't get a whole lot of distortion. Again, if you're good with Photoshop and you have some of those skills, a lot of times you can take some of that uh, distortion out of it and even things up. Um, but there are so many out there that if you just dig around for uh, a little bit of a uh, bit of time online, you're going to find some inspiration. And don't be afraid then to to resize it. So uh, in search for this build, building, I had one that I liked for down here, and I wanted to put something up here in this corner. Uh, the way this will sit, there'll be another one-story building that occupies most of the space on the side of it. So I wanted all of my busyness to be out towards the street where people would see it uh, in the HO world uh, and where it wouldn't be be hidden by other structures. But this little empty space here was still inviting. So I went online and looked for a number of photos. Um, came up with two different designs that I liked uh, and sized them out roughly uh, on, on just in Microsoft Word based off of the size of the real estate I had available. Uh, made a bunch of different sizes uh, and printed them out, uh, and then then tested them. Uh, first one I tried is pretty close in color to the background of the brick that's here already, um, and sized out that way would look would look pretty decent there. But I think it kind of gets gets lost. So I wanted something with a little bit more color. Uh, this sign that I'm going to end up actually using. Uh, 
was actually a, a much larger sign and, and very square in shape. But it was very easy to just simply narrow it and stretch it to get it to fit the space that I wanted. Uh, and it's simple enough that all the graphics still work that way. Uh, the first one was a little bit smaller than needed to fit, so I went up just to the next size up. And that fits in that space very nicely. So we're going to lay that right on in there tonight and create a, uh, a ghost sign here on this building. So before you put the sign on, you want to do um, all of the uh, all the finishing of the brickwork underneath it, or lattice, or whatever uh, clapboard, whatever siding. These aren't necessarily just on brick buildings. We're just doing a, a brick structure here tonight. Um, get get your basic colors on there. Get your mortar lines on there. You're not going to see a lot of it underneath, but you might see some of it bleeding through, and it's just easier to treat your whole wall uh, from the start. I haven't done all the final weathering on this yet, but I at least want the base down. Uh, we'll come through with powders and, and other smaller coats after after this is done, including going over top of the decal or the paper that we put on it. Uh, but it's nice to have your basic colors set before you, you get into this stage. Um, especially if you're using weathering powders, you don't want anything that's gonna get underneath um, your decal or your paper and cause any issues with things uh, that would, would, would rub off or uh, prevent the, the uh, adhesion there. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna take another sheet, I always print off two, for one to test with and then one to actually start with, and a couple of each size so that if I screw one up, because I've worked with me before and I'm probably gonna screw one up, I have another another backup there to, to go with right away. Right, move the building out of the way for just a second, move some of these other examples out of the way before I do some damage. There's another one here in the way too. I see the spinning wheels again. More issues, huh? Hopefully the hammers will come back up. Okay, and we're back. All right, hopefully this doesn't keep happening to us. All right, we're going to have to get started here with the actual project. You might hear a little bit of an echo. I'm getting some sound feedback from the uh, workbench cam. Uh, hopefully that's not too bothersome, but uh, I'm going to try and work with it so that we can, we can get through this tonight without any more issues. Uh, I printed off another sheet, and before we do anything else, we're going to start by sanding down the paper, because paper thin isn't thin enough. So I'm going to flip this over, and with a sanding block, just start working away at the paper. You don't have to go crazy at this, but you want to you want to work that that paper down until it is tissue thin. My goal is to be able to see the writing on the other side of the paper from this side. Now, if you go too far and tear. Uh, it might not be the end of the world. Uh, sometimes a little bit of a tear or a thin spot here or there is okay. It just gives the sign a little bit more aging. You just take your time with this and sand slowly and evenly. Using a fairly fine sanding paper here because uh, I don't want to go too fast. And I'm starting to get down there. Not quite where I want to be yet.
As you can probably tell, this is one of the steps where it's easiest to go too fast and go too far. But after you do a few of these, you'll pick up on it pretty quickly. You'll start to learn uh, when you want to ease up. A larger block like this works well to give even uh, sanding over a larger area so that you run less risk of, of tearing through. You can see I have put a few small holes in this one already, but uh, not in any of the places where the signs are going to be, so that looks pretty good. I'm also going to take and just do a couple of quick swipes on the front side, and that will fade just a little bit more uh, off of the printing and thin this down a little bit. Okay, now we've got it pretty pretty well sanded there. I'm going to hold this closer to the camera. Hopefully you can uh, see some of that. Uh, this one's a little more faded and sanded than the other. I'm probably going to try and get this one off here first. Uh, but it is fairly see-through uh, and thinner than the rest of the paper. Uh, probably just a, maybe a little thicker still than I'd like. I'm getting to that point where I'm about to screw it up. Okay, we're going to cut this out now with a, util with a, a hobby knife. There's no uh, super special trick here other than you really want to use a fresh blade. And I'm going to going to show that this blade's been in my uh, knife for a little while now. And it's probably not sharp enough to do a good job. I do a test swipe here. I get a pretty, pretty good cut, so hopefully that doesn't tear. But I'm not going to chance it. I'm going to go ahead and put in a fresh blade anyway. One of my general rules of thumb is new project, new exacto blade. And I can tell you my modeling got a lot better when I stopped being so uh, stingy with the uh, uh, reusing the, the hobby blades for as long as, as conceivably possible. All right, so with a fresh blade in here, this shouldn't be any trouble at all. And we're just going to cut this out. And we have our sign. Bring the building back in here again. And just give it a test fit. That's upside down. All right, and that's where we're, where we're going. So next we want to put a little bit of glue on here and glue this down. Now normally I use a, uh, I recommend full strength Elmer's glue. Uh, or any any white glue, but you usually want the, the fuller the fuller strength stuff. Uh, for this, I'm going to use some school glue. School glue is typically not quite as uh, as strong; it's a little more watered down. Uh, and in this case, that's actually what you want because you don't want uh, you don't want to overdo this and get too much glue and have things seeping out. Uh, we really want to be able to get our uh, our sign to nestle down into every little groove and looking cranny. So I'm going to put just a little bit of bit of a drop on the back of this. Hopefully I can get some out. And now spread that as smooth as I can get it. Of them in camera here. I know the camera zoomed out a little bit. I need to figure out a way to get the camera closer in on this workbench without it being right in front of my face. Okay, we're going to press that in place. 
And now with our fingernail, try and work it into as many of the grooves as you can uh, and really get it pressed into the brickwork. The thinner you get the, uh, the paper as you sand it down, the more you'll be able to get the relief through the brick. And that's one of the keys in getting that painted on look. Tore a little bit there, but again, that's okay. If you get a few tear throughs, not the end of the world. We'll tie that in a little bit more weathering later on too. Uh, it's not uncommon at all that you see the paint worn away completely on these. And if you really don't like it, peel it off before it sets completely and try again. All right. And so there we have it. Get that up camera height so you can appreciate it a little bit better. And we have our first, uh, first sign on there. So you can see just how easy it is to, to do this um, and get that molded in look. Uh, to finish this off, we can now go back over it with uh, any of the other normal weathering techniques that we would like to do. If you want to uh, darken things in, you can do the, our good old standby uh, ink -hall wash here with uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, India ink uh, to tone everything down. Uh, we can use uh, weathering powders. We can use thin acrylic paints to get more washes. Uh, and uh, it looks, uh, looks really good. Uh, we'll do here. Just grab a little bit of the weathering powder, go over the top. I'm not going to do too much weathering because there's still a lot I have to do on this kit, and I don't want fingerprints getting in everything as I'm as I'm building. Uh, but this is a good good quick tutorial on just the sign itself. We want to tie that down a little, tone that down a little bit more. Take just a little bit of gray and streak it down over the sign. Uh, a little goes a long way, so you just want to take your time with it. Again, just adds a little bit more age. Uh, we can also come in with a brick color, something that's a little closer to our, our brick background here. This is some light rust. Might be a little too orange. We'll give it a shot. Over here, we've got that bleed through spot. Had a little color there. Maybe add a little up here around the top and the edges so it looks more blended in. Uh, we can do the same over the decal as well. We can just come right down and blend it on in. Uh, this is the, the fun and easy part uh, of, of doing any of these kits. I'm also going to come back through here. We'll put some electric meters on this, some power lines, really detail the, uh, the whole side of the building so that it, it has lots going on and stands out nicely. Um, but that's the, uh, that's the, the simple how-to on uh, adding a ghost sign to your build. Uh, we managed to get that done in about a half an hour, even with all the uh, technical interruptions. So uh, not too bad. Uh, Lee asked, do you seal the sign when, when completed? Uh, that's entirely up to you. Uh, you certainly can. Um, there's no real need to uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's paper and, or a decal, um, and it's, it's set on there pretty nicely. Uh, if you wanted to use a clear flat coat, you can. My only caution there is, uh, as with anything, if you put powders over it, uh, the clear coats do tend to want to um, wash a lot of that, uh, that powder away. So you have to go a little heavier with the, with the powders and accept that you're going to lose some of it in the in the final project. Um, but uh, unless you're going to handle it a lot, I probably don't, don't I would bother, bother with it. it. Uh, I usually don't clear coat uh, my structures because they don't get handled that much. And once they go into the layout, they're really not going to get handled. So uh, you don't have much chance of putting fingerprints in it or, or rubbing things off. Uh, and so me, the risk of undoing something I've done is, is, worth, is, is bigger than um, just, just leaving it uh, unprotected, but, but certainly you could. Um, it's, it's also worth noting if you're doing your brickwork, sometimes it's easier to seal that in layers so that as you go over with some, some washes, you don't take off uh, layers underneath. Uh, that's uh, that's something that you want to uh, want to consider as well as you're going through the through this process. Um, 
But uh, all these techniques, very easy to do. And uh, just like to share some of these things so that as you're getting into the hobby or what you've been, or you've been in a long time, whether you're starting off with a, a kit like this that's not very expensive and designed for beginners uh, or a true craftsman style kit, uh, which in many ways are easier to, to work with than the beginning kits I've, I've found, uh, you can get really good effects uh, just by, you know, giving things a, a little bit of a try. Uh, so with that, we'll, we'll make it an early night before the camera uh, ducks out again. Uh, thank you all for joining me. As I mentioned, this will be the, the last workbench Wednesday for this month. We'll pick them up again sometime in February after we get through um, our catalog month of craziness. The catalog will be online and live next Friday, the 14th. Uh, we'll do our catalog live show on uh, Friday afternoon with, with Dave and I. And uh, Megan and Megan will be doing uh, the accessories and ready-to-run portion of the catalog. We'll have our American Flyer catalog show live at that point as well. We've got a number of special appearances planned for uh, the following week uh, with uh, with Train World, with... Um, with the maps on their uh, podcast. So we'll, we'll post all those events as you, uh, on our social media channel so you can follow along. Uh, and then uh, our big event for the end of the month, we'll wrap everything up at Springfield for the Big E uh, train show up there. So uh, hopefully if you're in the area, come out and see us. It is by far the biggest train show I've ever been to. And no matter what your scale or your interest in the hobby, there is definitely something there uh, for, um, for everybody so uh, definitely if you if you can make it up to Springfield uh, and see us at the uh, end of the month there at the Big E train show um, until then thank you all for all of your support I hope everyone's having a happy start to the new year I uh, look forward to seeing you all down the road and uh, all back on here again uh, in, a, in a near time thank you all and have a great night